let's get this going. So in five, four, three, two. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Scott M. Graves, founder of M the Media Project and SM Graves Associates. And I am Scott J. Graves, and I'm a local city councilor, been in politics for quite a while, and I'm just along for the ride. And we like to cause all kinds of good trouble as it pertains to politics. You are listening to Scott's on the Rocks Political. Well, we got uh, a couple of interesting things happening tonight, don't we, Scott? We do. We do. We're we going to start off talking about the wonderful world of conflict of interest. We try to be somewhat educational for our listeners and viewers. And then hopefully in the second half, we're going to have, this is exciting, we're going to have our first guest tonight that'll be coming on. Patrick Clark Davis from the town of Orange, which is to the west of us, uh, is going to come on and talk about um, education. He's on the school committee in Orange for the Maha Regional School District and um, has some things that he wanted to share with us. And we're going to talk about that. I, I suspect it's going to have something to do with um, Chapter 70 funding. That's the legal chapter under which uh, in uh, the Massachusetts legislation uh, that we fund public education. But right. in the first half, we got, we got conflict of interest stuff to talk about, which in and of itself is not a conflict. Did you know that, Cam? The conflict's not a conflict. I did not know that. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't hit the other <laughs> That was a bad joke. Quickness. I know. That was a joke that just went like, <laughs> ooh. So, Scott, um, I want, uh, I'm going to let you set the stage on this, okay? Yeah. Um, why, don't, uh, why don't you let our listeners know a little bit about what exactly the conflict of interest law is, why we have it, and why all of us that have ever worked in the public sphere or been elected to the public sphere, uh, why and how it pertains to each of us. Yeah, um, so I think people are interested to know that um, the state has, and I'm gonna kind of talk about a little bit about the open meeting law as well, because they're, they're interrelated in that uh, public employees um, have to be have have to know about what they can and can't do when they're doing their job. Um, the in the in the main basis, the, the main reason why we have a conflict of interest law is um, is to keep government officials honest and non corrupt. So th there's basically um, two major sections of the conflict of interest law. What a lot of people I, I think don't get is that it applies to every public employee equally in the same way. So for instance, um, uh, once one major section, section 19 provides that um, you can't, uh, a public, no, no public employee can, uh, can participate in a particular matter in which he or she has a financial interest, which makes sense. Like say for instance, I'm on the city council and, um, and an item comes up where, uh, where, well, that's a bad example. But for instance, if you're a public employee and a matter is coming before you in your role as a public employee and you have a financial interest in the result of it, whether your brother's gonna get a building permit or whether your, your cousin wants, um, wants to cater a, a, a big public event or something like that in the city, you, you, can't, you can't vote or take part in the selection of your relative or yourself um, in, that, in, that, um, in, in, in that bid or in that request to get, to get the, uh, the job or, or the project. So um, there's very hefty fines, you know, and sometimes people will run afoul of the law just by inadvertently, by not thinking. Like you don't have to be corrupt to violate that law. Uh, so many people right. have found that they, they make a decision like, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. But I mean, you're facing jail time, prison time, and up to $10,000 in, in fines in certain circumstances. So it's got a lot of teeth in it. Um, right. But, you know, I, I, I had, a, um, and I don't want to ramble on about it because we're going to be talking about it, I think probably on our next show more in depth. But I was, when I, when, when Mayor Hawk quit the um, mayor's position in November of 19, about a, um, just about a year ago, exactly. He, um, I was council president at the time. And obviously 
we all uh, we we all thought that he was going to resign and and um, there would be a an, a an election to replace him as mayor. Um, so I had announced that I was going to run for mayor since I was council president. And I expected to be acting mayor, and I just figured I'd just f finish out the uh, term and uh, run for mayor. At the time, um, now it was coming to the end of the year, which we are now. And the, the next council president is going to be elected at the first city council meeting in the new year, the first, first Monday of the, of the new year. Right. So I was pretty close to that. And I said, well, I'm going to run for council president again as well, because I like I, I love that position and, and I was going to do that. Now, I was told, um, actually, Mayor Hawks, the one that told me about it in the hallway, but apparently um, John Flick, the city solicitor, had had for some reason contacted the ethics commission about me and and asked them evidently whether or not I was able to run for council president, which would also be acting mayor in our circumstance because Hawk was leaving, resigning, and at the same time be a candidate for mayor. And Flick didn't tell me, but he was telling people, he had made the statement that ethics had told him, the ethics commission had told him, that it would be illegal. I would be violating the conflict of interest law if I became council president slash acting mayor while I was a candidate for, for the mayor's seat, to fill the mayor's position. Yeah. And this so, kind of thing, by the way, we say we should say for listeners, points out there's, uh, because this is common, there's a lot of times when you're either a bureaucrat, you know, you've got a job that you've, you're being paid to do by your political leaders or you're an elected official, you check in with, with ethics, right? Or conflict right. of interest at the state level because they'll tell you whether or not something is in fact a, a conflict of interest. The they'll tell you that you've they'll started. Tell you. They'll tell you. They won't tell somebody else. Right. Right. Exactly. And we and we and we can we're going to unpack that a little bit. We should also mention then, therefore, so based on what you've said so far, that if in fact it was it's a conflict of interest, right? This is what I'm thinking. If if you as as acting city council president are faced as everybody on the council and every all the citizens are with a special election and you want to run for that special election. If that was in fact a conflict of interest, wouldn't that mean that every time somebody wants to get reelected to any elected position, that that would be a conflict of interest? You know, any transition that Bingo. could take place um, with a, an already elected official on one position vying for another position would in fact be a conflict of interest. Yeah, exactly. If the law was applying across the way, so it doesn't make any sense. If that was interpreted correctly, that's exactly what you just said is exactly correct. And that's why, it, this is why I kind of want to point out that when that happened and Mayor Hawk pulled me to the side of the hallway and said, you know, Flick, Flick's telling people that you can't be council president because that means you're going to be acting mayor and, and, and you're running for mayor. You can't do it because ethics told him you can't do it. And I, I'm sitting there going, now I'm a lawyer. I got a lot of experience. I've been a city council for a long time, city solicitor. Like I've been around the block and back and I'm looking at Hawk and I'm like, I didn't really understand what he was talking. I'm like, and I, it, it takes you, a, it takes you back. And, and you, and I had to think, and I didn't really say anything. I'm like, he never, he, and I said, Flick didn't tell me that. Who gave you, son, who said, gave you that then, advice? Larry, Daryl, or your other brother, Daryl. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm, so, so this is what, this is the danger of, although, although, um, nothing happened. I, so I ran anyway. So, so I, I ran for council president, knowing I would be acting mayor, and I was also a candidate for the to to fill the the mayor's seat vacated by, or absented by Mayor Hawk. I did it anyways, and of course I'm still here, and I'm not in jail. So that can give you probably a, an idea as to who some, was some right. <laughs> yeah, who was right and who was wrong. And might it might lead you to ask questions. Why was that message sent to me? Why was that interpretation uh, provided? Uh, that interpretation of the conflict of interest law, which going back to what you said, that would mean that no mayor could ever run for re-election. It means that no no city employee could ever seek reappointment of his or her position. No city employee could ever seek a, a job that's opening up that might be any job that's, that's going to be paid. You can't do it. 
So right. that interpretation of the conflict of interest law, so it's bad enough to have the conflict of interest law in your face every day that we live, right, as a public employee. But then to get an interpretation like that thrown at you, you kind of have to go, wow, what else is going to come after me? Uh, so anyway, well, wait a minute now. Uh, so according to what you're telling us, right, and what we think is the end, is the, is, is the fact, according to the conflict of interest law, wouldn't it be a conflict of interest if, let's just say, you are an existing elected official, like a mayor, and you are mayoring, yeah. or whatever they call it, and at the same time, you decide to negotiate for a job that's similar to being mayor, but not like mayor, say like in a neighboring town, for instance, and you negotiate a, a contractual agreement, you don't sign it, but you agree to it, you get offered the job and accept it, you still run for mayor in the town in which you're mayoring still, and win, and then decide to quit. Uh, at some point in time, was it, that could be a conflict of interest then, or no? Um, your hypothetical is too close to the actual facts of a situation we had in Gardner, so I'm, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, wait. I don't know if you have the time frame exactly right, and I don't want to. I, I don't think you got the time frame exactly right. I, I wait, don't know. I don't know. I'm well, making. Where you're going with this? I, I don't know. And here's the thing with with the whole conflict of interest, ethics. You can call ethics like I can call ethics, which I did um, after I heard this this interpretation that Flick was throwing around. Um, and Flick, by the way, confirmed with me, confirmed it to me in an email, which I obviously still have, that that's exactly what he was saying. But I called ethics at, um, and what, and it's right in the conflict of interest law. Ethics cannot give me, for instance. So if I asked a question, if I called ethics and I said, I want to run. I want. I'm, I want to run for council president, which is going to be acting mayor as well, and I want to be a candidate. They'll answer that question because it's about me. But if I ask them, "Hey, can 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 Mayor Hawk really quit? This can can Mayor Hawk really quit um, being mayor and gardener, take a new full time position down the street as town administrator at Westminster, and still take a full time paycheck from Gardner for the rest of his term, even though he's not there and he cleaned out his office, he's not coming back." They won't answer that question for me because it's not about me. So that has, to, so my first question was, and of course ethics won't answer me because ethics doesn't answer people. They just want to get you in trouble. They don't want to like help you. And that would be crazy. Imagine a state bureaucrat actually wanting to help you. So, um, well, that's, that's a little unfair. <laughs> that's a, how? That's painting with a broad brush. Tell, tell me a state bureaucracy that wants to help a, a common citizen. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't had to deal a lot with, <laughs> with, with, with ethics. You, no, you have to be a member of the ruling class. <laughs> I mean, if you're a member of the ruling class, you're fine. You don't get to be a member of the ruling class with this kind of hat. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, this do. Oh, this. <laughs> but, so, 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 but, the, but the thing is, how does Flick get a legal advisory when he's not a city councilor, he's not running for council president, He's not going to be acting mayor and he's not running for mayor. How we got a how we got an advisory from the ethics commission is beyond me. It's, it's beyond me. In fact, inquiring minds want to know. We're going to unpack this uh, a little bit more uh, in our next episode. We wanted to sort of I asked him, he wouldn't answer me. So maybe 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 he'll answer us. Oh, that's interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, may, you know, it, it, this is uh, this is the perfect concoction of of, um, of uh, education, entertainment, and political thought going on here, if I do say so myself. So maybe, it, maybe and a little maybe, bit, and a little bit of open catalyst. government. And, and a You're little right. bit of open government. Maybe just the catalyst would be the radio show. Maybe we can even tempt him to come on the, ra uh, the program as our guest, and then he'll tell us. Yeah, that would be good. Maybe he, you know. So I don't know. So we're, we'll see. We're going to unpack this more in a subsequent episode in a couple of weeks. Uh, we should also let our listeners know we're going to take a break for Thanksgiving because, you know, it's tough work making podcasts, man, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. That so um, but it's a lot of fun doing this with you guys.